Hello, hello. Thank you. Birthdays and anniversaries. Who just had a birthday? And the baby or you? John, Rocky, and Kathy. All right, looky here. Good looking bunch up here. Anybody else with a birthday or an anniversary? All right, let's sing to these two young ones here. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. God bless you. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Only one will love to you. Born again me. How many years, Rocky? Forty-three. Is it right? Even. Is, it is right? that right? Okay. <laughs> Crisis avoided. Sing to Rocky and Kathy. Happy anniversary to you. Happy anniversary to you. Happy anniversary. God bless you. Happy anniversary. All right. How many of you admit it? You're wearing your stretchy pants this morning. <laughs> How many of you couldn't fit into your stretchy pants this morning? <laughs> Hope you had a good week and uh, got to spend some time with your family. And thank the Lord for his goodness. Amen. Yes. Got some more winter folks coming in. The more, the more that come, the more we like it. Amen. Amen. Good. We're glad you're here this morning. Uh, Will and his group are they're on their way back from Blue Ridge. He'll be back tonight. So pray for them as they travel. We're glad you're here. If there's any, any visitors here this morning, we'd like to recognize you. And uh, our ushers will give you a, a card. Anyone for, any first-time visitors this morning? Anywhere? All right. That's fine. We don't want to scare anyone. There we go, over here. All right. Thank you. We got one right over here. Brother Nelson, if we could get her a card, and we'll get around and shake her hand. All right, those of you that, that got in this week in the campground, how about standing for us so we can oh, yeah. welcome you? If you got in yes. this week at the campground, stand yes. up. There's Miss Christine and Dale oh, and others. Yes. Oh, yes. We're glad. Oh, yes. We're glad you're home. Amen? Yeah. Home. You're back where you belong. Amen. <laughs> so we're glad you're here. Hope you had a good week. Looking forward to the Lord meeting with us this morning. Has he been good to you? Yeah. He's worthy to be praised. So stand with us, get a song. Ron will get us a good song to sing. And the best way for the Lord to get into the service is for you to sing to him. So let's do that this morning. Page 393. When we all get to heaven, it is good to see you. And what a good time of year. A good good uh, uh, fellowship and food on th Thursday. And, and uh, it is good to see you. I'm glad some of our sick, been out sick, are, are back. And so you're here, we're here, let's praise the Lord, let's give him praise. Are you happy? Have you, have, how many of you went shopping on the, either Thursday or Friday on the big day? Not very many. Online I shopping. I think you lie, yeah. I, I, how many have a balance left on your credit cards? How many you going to? Sing with us. What a good day, and we love you, we thank God for you. Uh, been a good week, and I say, as Paul mentioned, driving back through the campground, it is, it's, uh, uh, Evie mentioned it today, it's a neat time. Summertime, you don't even go back there, but in the wintertime, when the folks are coming in, it's a sweet place and a good gathered place, and so it's always good. Ride back through there, as I said last week, keep your windows closed, but anyhow, sing page 393. <laughs> Let me all get, here we go. Sing it now. Sing the wondrous love of Jesus. Sing his mercy and 
His grace in the mansion, bright and blessed. He'll prepare for us the place. Sing it when we all get to heaven. What a day of rejoicing that will be when we.
thing about this place, we got fill-ins that can fill in, and I was reminded this week of when Lisa was just a youngster, we went to Jamaica, and Susan Will couldn't go. Lisa filled in then, so it's, she's another cousin, you know. They, are, they were born singing. <laughs> what would I do? This is an old, old standard. Nothing I've done. And what would I do without the Lord Jesus Christ? I don't know. I don't want to know. Do you? Here we go. What would I do without Jesus? The shepherd. Of my body, Lord, I just couldn't walk this road alone. When I'm hungry, He feeds me, and when I'm thirsty, He's my water. I couldn't make it without Jesus. What would I do? And when Someone to talk to He's always there to listen When arms fold without me He rocks me in His bosom What would I do without Jesus The shepherd of my valley I couldn't make it without Jesus What would I do a mountain when the ones I have counted on have let me down Whoa, that, when, when I go to Jesus he's the one yeah, I, man, I can count on I couldn't make it without Jesus what would I do and when I Someone to talk to He's always there to listen When arms fold without me He rocks me in his bosom What would I do without Jesus The shepherd of my land I couldn't make it without Jesus What would I do could make it without Jesus, what would I do? I like to say I'm glad I'm a Christian and glad what the Lord's done for me. I've been through some surgery and it's hard, you know, it really does something to your mind for a while, but I'm glad he's always there, and I don't know what I would have done without Jesus. Don't know what I would have done without his word comforting my heart, and thankful that he, he does take care of us and cares about us, cares about every little thing about us, and I'm just glad that I'm a Christian, and just pray for me that I'll continue to get well. Amen. Amen. And this time of year, I can't help but thank the Lord for all that he's done for me. It's been two years, and I'm cancer-free. And I, I just thank him today, and I feel blessed. Give me all I need When I 
wake up to the storm, my soul cries peace. Sometimes I try to count them, there are too many I confess. With arms upraised, I'll just say, still bless. Him. So in the morning, should you find me with my eyes closed in death? What victory, what glory, still bless. There is never a day he doesn't give me all I need. When I wake up. His healing power 
the great physician, he always would pass by. Then I began to feel the change, cause I'd feel to praise his name and give him thanks for all the blessings he's bestowed. So Lord, if it would be okay, we'd like to take some time today. Lord, I love you enough to lift my head in hand and praise you. And I'll thank you for all you've done for me. Thank you, Lord. And I love you enough to be faithful to your house, Lord, to my calling and to my family. Filled with ridicule and scorn And with your help, Father Gonna keep marching in your army Till the glorious day One more time Lord, I love you enough To lift my hands in praise unto you And I'll thank you To be faithful to your house, Lord, to my calling and to my family. I love you enough to stand boldly for you, Jesus, in a world that's filled with ridicule and scorn. And with your help, Father, we'll keep marching. sermon's only an hour, so we got plenty of time. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes. I don't say them enough. And I'm not even really sure why Cause they describe how I feel About the ones I hold dear in my life Just three little words But they're mighty when used And I need to use them today so to my wife and my boys, my family and friends, there is something that I want to say. Oh, I love you. I want you to know it today. Yes, I love you. It's a privilege for me. To say how much you mean to me You are precious indeed And so from my heart sincerely Oh, I love you Please don't make a mistake of saying about those that you love 
Well, they know how I feel So I don't need to tell them Because there may come a day You would give anything For you to have just one more chance To pull them up close And say those three words You better do it today While you can Oh, I love you I want you to know it today Yes, I love you It's a privilege for me To say how much you mean to me you are precious indeed and so from my heart sincerely oh i love you now there's someone else we need to consider and he's worthy of these words today he went to a cross and he died for our sins and jesus is his holy name so lord we love you we want you to know it today lord i it's a privilege for me to say how much you mean to me. You are precious indeed, and so from my heart, sincerely, Lord, we love you. Lord, I love you. I don't say enough, I'm going to say today. Let's go, let's go. Sing I don't say them enough And I'm not even really sure why Cause they describe how I feel About the ones I hold dear in my life Just three little words But they're mighty when used And I need to use them today so to my wife and my boys my family and friends there is something that I want to say oh I love you I want you to know it today yes I love you it's a privilege for me to say how much you mean to me. You are precious indeed, and so from my heart, sincerely, oh, I love you. Please don't make a mistake of saying about those that you love. Well, they know how I feel, so I don't need to tell them because there may come a day you would give anything for you to have just one more chance to 
Pull them up close and say those three words. You better do it today while you can. Oh, I love you. I want you to know it today. Yes, I love you. It's a privilege for me to say how much you mean to me. You are precious indeed, and so from my heart, sincerely, oh, I love you. Now there's someone else we need to consider and he's worthy of these words today he went to a cross and he died for our sins and jesus is his holy name lord we love you we want you to know it today lord i love you it's a privilege for me to say how much you mean to me you are precious in me and so from my heart sincerely Lord, we love you. Lord, I love you. I don't say it enough. I'm going to say them Is that CD up there, Ryan? I think I'll do number one. Thirteen years ago today, at that altar right there, the Lord called me to preach. And I'm thankful for that. Number one. <clears throat> Maybe a little bit more monitor, Kevin. You may not have earthly riches or be wealthy in this life. That does not mean that you're not blessed. Friend, let me tell you why. You see money, it cannot purchase the things that are the most precious. So let me tell you how to know if you are blessed well if your sins have been forgiven and if jesus is your king and if your name is in all oh, that book of life and if you have been a reading and if you've traded your stained garments for a brand new robe of righteousness oh then you know what it feels like to be blessed oh and if the good lord he has allowed you to be right here in his house today to worship with god's people in this good old fashioned way Oh, church, and if you can feel his power, his great love, and his sweet presence, oh, then you know what it feels like to be blessed. Well, now, if you have someone who loves you, and they even told you so today, if you have food and raiment, Oh, and a place to call home. Then I must say, it sure sounds 
like God's been faithful. Old church, and he's poured out his goodness. Oh, and you know what it feels like to be blessed. And if you have someone who's faithful, oh, and to call your name in prayer, oh, and when you face your darkest valley, if you Kev. Thank you, the Lord. Boy, he's been good to us. We are a blessed people this morning. You may not have earthly riches or be wealthy in this life. That does not mean that you're not blessed. Friend, let me tell you why. You see money, it cannot purchase the things that are the most precious. So let me tell you how to know if you've been blessed. Well, if your sins have been forgiven, Oh, and if Jesus is your king, and if your name is in the book of life, and if you have been a redeemed, and if you traded your stained garments for a brand new robe of righteousness, then you know what it feels like to be blessed. The good Lord, He has allowed you to be right here in His house today to worship with God's people in this good old fashioned way. Oh, and if you can feel His mighty power, His great love, and His sweet presence, then you know what it feels like to be blessed well now if you have someone who loves you and they even told you so today and if you have food and raiment and a place to call home then I must say it sure sounds like our God's been faithful oh and that he's poured out his goodness and I believe you know what it feels like to be blessed and if you have someone who's faithful just to call your name in prayer and when you face that darkest valley well if you found Jesus standing there and if can lift your hands up to heaven to give him praise and thankfulness then you know what it feels like to be blessed whoa yes church this is what it feels like to be blessed everywhere I look the Lord's moving if He's speaking to your heart. If he's telling you to move. If He's telling you to do something. If He's telling you to tell somebody you love them, just be obedient to His Spirit.
she picked up her baskets and she headed for home she had come with them empty but now they were full she walked through the door to Naomi's delight Ruth had a story that would change both their lives Naomi said daughter explain it to me whose field did you glean in so bountifully then Ruth said Boaz was a man's name and this is what happened in his field today she said everywhere I looked there was a blessing a handful right here and a handful right there and I must confess I am so undeserving oh but it sure feels good to be under his care well like little Ruth I also can say that I have a redeemer and he blesses each day with more than I need and he's always on time so Ruth's testimony is a whole lot like a mine because everywhere I look there is a blessing there's a handful right here and a handful right there and I must confess I am so you to stand. The Lord's moving. The Lord's continuing to move. I'm going to ask you to bow your head and close your eyes. If you're here this morning and maybe you're not sure really what's going on here, uh, we're a church that tries to obey the Spirit of the Lord as He moves and we try to get out of His way when He does that. But if you're here today, you've never accepted Him as your Savior. You can't point to a time in your life where you made the decision. You confessed to him that I know I can't get to heaven without you, Lord. We want to give you that opportunity to do that this morning. We want to give you that opportunity to make that decision. I wonder if there's anyone here this morning that would say, you know what, Hoy, I've, I've, never, I've never made that decision, and I want you to pray for me. I'm not going to point you out. I'm not going to come back there and embarrass you. I'm not going to do any of that. we just like to pray for you. Is there anyone here this morning that would say, Hoy, I, I've never trusted Christ as my Savior. And I want you to pray for me by uplifted hand. Anyone here this morning? If all hearts and minds are, are honest, then we're all saved. But even as saved people, we have needs. Even as saved people, we fall short. Even as saved people, sometimes we just need to think about how good God's been to us and, and give him the praise and the honor and the glory he deserves. So certainly in a crowd of, of, of this size, there's people that have needs. And you would say, Hoy, as a child of God, I know I'm saved. But I got a need this morning that I'd like for you to pray about. Would you slip your hand up? God knows about it. I have a need, and I'd ask you to take that to the Lord in prayer tonight. God bless you. Maybe there's something else God's spoken to you about. 
Maybe he's spoken to you about drawing up closer. I was going to preach this morning on, on Caleb. And Caleb said it's six different times in the scripture. This is how he's described. He wholly followed the Lord. Yeah. You, th- you think about that. Yeah. One time in scripture is enough. Yeah. Two times is more than enough. But six different times the Holy Spirit said, when they mention Caleb, this is what I want you to yeah. know about him. He wholly completely fully followed the Lord and it was a sweet study let me tell you why Caleb was faithful all those years in the wilderness when to be honest with you he didn't deserve to be in the wilderness yeah he was one of the spies that came back and said no we can take the land but because the majority didn't have faith he had to go for 40 years he had to wait 40 years for his promise And I know some of you have been praying for things, and you've waited a long time for that inheritance. You've waited a long time for that promise. But let me tell you why it's so important that you don't quit. Let me tell you why it's so important that you don't give up. When Caleb came to the end of his life, because he wholly followed the Lord, not only did the Lord fulfill that promise and grant his inheritance, but you know what Caleb was able to do? Caleb was able to bless his children. Caleb was able to bless his children and his grandchildren. Because Moses told him, he said, everywhere you walk, that's going to be your inheritance for you and your family. Everywhere you walk, that's going to be ground that you can claim for your family. And that's exactly what he did. He conquered Hebron. He went on to another uh, place and conquered that with the help of Othniel. His, his daughter got married, and she came to him, and she said, Dad, we need water for our land. And as a loving father, he was able to give it to him. Let me say this to you this morning, parents and grandparents. Do you want to bless your children? The only way we will bless our children is if we're wholly following the Lord. If we're completely following the Lord. And, and I was going to say this this morning. I'm thankful for the Caleb's in my life. Because this is what happens. When you make the decision to wholly follow the Lord, God honors that blessing, and that blessing spills out over onto other people. And in Caleb's case, it spilled out over into his family. And listen, we're here this morning enjoying blessings we never earned, blessings we did not deserve. And you know why we're enjoying them? Because somewhat down the road in our life, God put a Caleb in our life. And because of Caleb's faithfulness, and because Caleb said, I'm going to serve the Lord with all I have, we're enjoying the benefits of it today. Because there were Caleb's like Walter Rice. Because they were Caleb's like Bonnie and Buren Duncan. Because they were Caleb's like Brother and Sister Gay and Sister O'Halloran and and Eric Stevens and on and on we could go. Because they were Caleb's in our life, we're enjoying the blessings this morning. And you think about the Caleb's that have come across in your life. And with that comes the challenge. You know what? I don't want the blessings to stop with me. I want my boys to receive the blessings. I want my grandchildren. I want those that will be worshiping here 50 years from now when we're long gone. I want them to be able to feel the same presence and the same power because a group of people said, I'm giving God all I have. I'm going to wholly follow the Lord. That's what it means. It means Caleb served the Lord without reservation. There was nothing in his life he held back. His mouth belonged to the Lord. His mind belonged to the Lord. His heart, his hands, his feet, they all belonged to the Lord. And if we were honest this morning, if somebody looked at our life, if our neighbors, if our family, could they look at you, could they point at you, could they point at me and say, that is a Christian that wholly follows the Lord. Well, why should I, Hoy? Why should I? Let me tell you why. Because Jesus gave his all for you and I. And the only type of life that glorifies God is a full-hearted life that loves and serves the Lord. That means He's number one. That means everything in our lives revolve around Him. And I wonder this morning if you would say, if for no other reason for my children, if for no other reason for my grandchildren or my family, boy, I want to fully follow the Lord this morning. 
I want to surrender some things that I've been holding on to. I want to say to God, God, you have me a hundred percent. I'm not holding anything back. Yeah. I wonder if there's some people that would say that this morning. Yes, God. Help me. I wonder if there's some teenagers yeah. who would say that this morning. Yes. Let me tell you something else, Caleb. Yet, I'm preaching my whole sermon, and y'all don't even realize it. You know what Caleb did? He stood up to the majority. Yeah. He stood up to the majority. Yes, he did. When him and jo- Joshua came back, the ten spies said, "We can't do it," and Caleb stood backbone straight. Yeah. He said, we can do it. We will do it. And they got so mad they wanted to kill him. Yeah. But he stood strong. He stood strong. What we need in this day and age, we need Christians that will stand against the majority. How many of you realize that the majority is usually against the will of God? Popular opinion is usually against the will of God. There's nothing wrong with standing with a minority if that's what God wants to have take place. So I wonder this morning, if there's some folks that need to say, you know what, Hoy? I need to make the same decision Caleb made. I know I'm saved. I know I'm on my way to heaven. I know God's been good. But you know what? I want to make a decision today. I got some things in my life that I want to give to him. I want to surrender everything to him. Because we can't expect the same victories Caleb enjoyed if we're not willing to surrender the same way Caleb surrendered. Is there an error in your life you're holding back? Let me tell you something. When you wholly follow the Lord, three things happen. Not only is God glorified, not not only are others edified, but you will be satisfied. Yeah. That's what he created you for. He created you to give him every part of your life. And if you're honest this morning, you would say, Hoy, I don't have the satisfaction in my heart that I should. I don't have the fulfillment. I don't have the purpose. You know why? Maybe because there's an error in your life you're still holding on to. Maybe there's an error you say, you know what? I'm throwing it all in, Lord. I'm all in today. If God's spoken to your heart, we're going to give you an opportunity to pray as Ron leads us in a song. Father, we love you. God, we pray, Lord, for your spirit. I believe you're speaking to hearts. God, maybe you're calling some young people to step out. Maybe you're calling some parents or, or grandparents to step out. And say, God, for the sake of my children, for the sake of my family, for the sake of those following behind me, God, I want to be a Caleb in somebody else's life. Or maybe they want to come and thank God for the Caleb in their life. Yes. The one who made the decision in their family line to say, I want to give God everything I got. And now those blessings are spilling on us because they made that decision. God, we pray that you have your way. You saw the hands that were lifted for those that are carrying burdens and have needs in their life. God, we ask, Lord, that you would work in their life. God, if you're, if you're speaking to them about bringing them to the altar, I pray they'd be obedient. Most of all, if there's one who's never been saved, God, we pray, Lord, that your spirit would speak to their heart. They would have the courage to come, God, knowing there'd be people here to pray with them. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. As we sing, if the Lord's spoken to your heart, would you come this morning? Sing this little song. The things that I love and hold dear would you come if the Lord spoke to your heart are just our own and not mine at all Jesus only let me use them to brighten my life so remind me remind me dear For these that have come, we'll continue to sing. The Lord spoken to your Nothing heart. Would you come? Good have I done to deserve God's own son? I'm not worthy of the stars in His hand. But He chose the road to Calvary to die in my place. Why He loved. Where you brought me from, where I could have been. 
Remember, I'm human and humans forget. So remind me, remind me, dear Lord. Nothing good have I done to deserve God's own son. I'm not worthy. Yet he chose the road to come To die in my place Why he loved me I can't understand Roll back the curtain Of memory now and then Show where you brought me Folks still coming, so we'll continue to sing. Appreciate those being obedient to the Lord. We'll continue to sing as these are praying. I've got a mansion just over. Just a cottage below A little silver And a little gold But in that place Where the ransom I want to go on That silver Just over here in that bright land, and someday yonder we will ever more. In search of a city, I want a man, a harp and a crown, and I've got a man just over the hill.